In the last episode of Soap, Tim came home to discover that his baby was possessed. He promised to drive the devil away or die trying. Billy promised Benson he would not allow himself to be possessed by the Sunnies, but that he wouldn't mind possessing Lisa. Bert still can't get anyone to believe that he saw a flying saucer. Jody and Alice can't believe that they're jealous of each other's dates. And as unbelievable as it may sound, they have decided to date each other. Danny believes that he's getting closer and closer to tracking down Elaine's kidnappers. Jessica can't believe how difficult it is to choose between the two men she loves. Confused? You won't be after tonight's episode of Soap. This is the story of two sisters, Jessica Tate and Mary Campbell. These are the Tates. And these are the Campbells. And this is Soap. Insurance covers this. Oh, I don't see why not, if it covers acts of God. <laughs> this was the devil, Bert. I'm sure I'd have a terrific chance of collecting if I told the insurance company the devil did this. <laughs> Major, what are you doing? I'm building a bunker, Colonel. Why are you building a bunker? Meaning no disrespect, sir, but what in the hell do you mean? Why am I building a bunker? <laughs> we don't need a bunker. Are we pulling out? <laughs> Carry on, Major. Right. Did you ever think that maybe it isn't the devil? Who might it be, Bert? A practical joker? <laughs> Aliens. You mean Mexicans? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. People from another planet. Visitors from out of space. Bert, go read a comic book. Hey, I'm trying to help you, moron. Help? with flying saucers. You're at an exorcism, not the planetarium, you idiot. Oh, oh yeah, well, no, no, really? You have an idiot? <laughs> yeah, well, UFOs happen to be a scientific fact, or don't you read the papers, Plastic Puss? Don't, please. Well, oh, I love it. Scientific facts from the impotent, invisible loon. Yeah, well, I'd rather be a loon than an embezzling, lecherous killer. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sure around you, the devil feels right at home. <laughs> Get out of here. Get out of my house. Hey, no fine. Hey. Well, it's okay. Mary. Oh. Sorry, Jessica. I wanted to help. Good night, Corinne. Good night, Eunice. Good night, Melonhead. <laughs> <laughs> What happened? How was it up there? How was it? He's as fresh as a daisy. Look at me. You look terrible. So do you. <laughs> Tim needs two more people to help up there. Forget it. I ain't getting that. I ain't getting dinner. And I ain't getting any younger. Hi. Oh, Jody, come in. I got a message on my service to come right over. What happened to your living room? Did Benson quit? <laughs> no, Jody, it's the baby. He's possessed. Come on, there's no such thing. <laughs> it's only in the movies, possessed. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> Look at that, the throat's lying. <laughs> Accept me, 
or die. Come on, Chester. We have to go help Tim. <laughs> Did the devil make Chester disappear? No, fear made Chester disappear. <laughs> Mary? Uh, excuse me. Uh, while you're up there, would you apologize for me? <laughs> and ask him to put me down gently. <laughs> Look at you. Hello, darling. What happened? Nothing, really. What were you doing up there? Oh, visiting. <laughs> it's going along fine, Corinne, really. I think the devil is weakening. He's going to leave soon. I know it. You're lying. I'm going up there. Corinne, not now. Sit down. You promised him. Wait until he's gone. And Benson vacuums up. <laughs> Who's up there with Tim now? Jody. He's here because of me, you know. Jody? No, the devil. Oh. He's here because of me. Don't be silly, Corinne. The devil doesn't even know you. <laughs> no, it's all my fault. He's here because of me. Because I slept with everyone in town. <laughs> oh, Corinne, please. First of all, you did not sleep with everyone in town. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> oh, please. Did you sleep with the mayor? Yeah. <laughs> you slept with the mayor? Oh, my goodness, the mayor. I voted for him. I told you not to vote for him. I told you to vote for Swanson. I slept with him, too. <laughs> you did? Believe me, the best man won. <laughs> The only reason I slept around so much was because I was so frustrated. I guess. <laughs> no. I was frustrated because I couldn't have Tim. I was young. I was unhappy. I, I didn't know what I was doing. And now I'm being punished. Well, I don't think it's your fault, no matter how much you slept around. I think it's my fault. Did you sleep with the DA? <laughs> Sure. Mm, the devil is not here because of you. He's here because of me, because I had two affairs while I was married. One with Detective Donahue and one with Peter. But, I mean, it wasn't outright adultery, because when I was with Detective Donahue, I thought Chester was dead. And when I was with Peter, he might as well have been. <laughs> mm, it's because of me the devil is here. No, Ma, it is not. It's because of me. Please, it is not because of either of you. It couldn't possibly be. Because you're two of the dearest people I know. You're good, kind, loving women who have never had an evil thought or done a malicious thing. The devil isn't here because of you. He's here in spite of you. Thanks, Aunt Mary. <laughs> Did you sleep with the fire chief? <laughs> well, almost, but he had to rush off. <laughs> You pig, now you're gonna die. You must be looking for Mel. Oh, sorry, did I hurt you? Oh, it's all right. Who are you? Who are you? I asked you first. Uh, yeah, but I'm the one that's got the gun. Oh, good point. Millie. All right, Millie. Where's Mel? Oh, he should be here shortly. Why? I'm gonna kill him. He's in Bolivia. I thought you just said he should be here shortly. No, I said he should be here, shorty. But, uh, as you can see, he's not. He's in Bolivia, sinuses. I'll wait. Sit down. What do you want to kill him for? Because he killed my wife. Oh, he didn't mean to kill him, Mr. Horowitz. Please believe me. <laughs> Horowitz? No. Dallas. Oh, that wife. Oh, he didn't mean to kill her either. I swear it. 
Hiya, baby. Oh, Mel! Who are you? I'm the guy whose wife you killed. Mr. Horowitz? No, no, the other one. Ah. All right, sucker. How do you want it? In the back? Or maybe you want to watch? Oh, God, please, don't kill me, please. I didn't mean to kill her. I didn't mean it. Please, dear God, have pity. God, I'm dying. I'm dying. He shot the chair, Mel. I can't kill you. I don't believe it, but I can't. Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, no, oh, thank you. <clears throat> Hey, Millie. Oh, Millie. Oh, oh. Hey, Mil Yo, Millie! <laughs> I can't kill you, because that would mean I'm no different than you are. And I am. You're going to jail, buddy, for the rest of your life. And if by some miscarriage of justice, one of these bleeding heart parole boards sets you free, I'll see you again. You, give me the phone. Okay. Here. Nice work, baby. Now what do we do? Kill him. It's very nice of you to invite me to tea, Reverend Sung. I feel honored. Billy, we just want you to know that we're extremely pleased with your progress. Thank you, Reverend. Lisa, is this mint tea? No, Reverend Sung. I hate mint tea. This isn't mint tea. This isn't mint tea what? This isn't mint tea, Father. I love all things, except I hate mint tea. I see. Billy, I feel that you're ready for your indoctrination. Oh? For three days and three nights, you'll be intensely trained by our staff. Sort of like a crash course, is that it? Oh, no, no. By the end of your drilling period, your mind will be finally disciplined to accept and to send forward the edicts of the church. Are we talking mind control? Oh, Billy. Or is brainwashing a better word? Brainwashing? Brainwashing? Do you think I actually wash people's brains? <laughs> well, I mean, it sounded like you were saying... Cleansing, maybe. <laughs> Cleansing of the mind leads to a purification of the body. And then you'll be free to accept Reverend Sung's doctrines. Is your name Reverend Sung? I beg your pardon, Father. I believe Billy was talking to me. I'm very sorry. Fifty Kurtayas, Lisa. Kurtaya, Kurtaya. To yourself, Lisa. <laughs> well, thanks again for the tea. I'd better be going. Going? Oh, yeah, see, it's nearly six. We eat at six. We? Yeah, me and my family. We are all your family now, Billy. Oh, yeah, I know, but I mean my real family, my mother and my father. I am your father. Right, well, uh, see you around, Dad. <laughs> I'm afraid you're just not ready to deal with outside influences yet, Billy. I thought you liked being with us. With you? I like being with you. Don't worry, Billy. After your indoctrination, you won't want to leave us. Look, you're wasting your time with my mind. I have a very strong will. I can't be brainwashed, really. Many have tried, and all have failed. See? Don't touch me. I can't stand that. There are two things I can't stand. Touching and mint tea. <laughs> all right. OK. I don't want to say it, but you give me no choice. I'm from the CIA. <laughs> and if I don't check in tonight, this place is going to be swarming with feds. You've been warned. Take it or leave it. I guess you're leaving it. Wait, wait, hey, hey, yeah. hey! Wait, I have a better idea. Count to ten real slow. Wait, wait. Uh. I exercise the ruler of hell to leave the body of this child. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. I beseech and command the most wicked dragon to depart from this house. Lord, hear our prayer. The Almighty will burn up my enemies on every side. We expel thee. Lord, hear our prayer. The Almighty approaches quickly and his enemies will be destroyed. I exclude thee. The strength of my words are greater than the fire of your hands. Who's next? 
It's all right. He landed in a swimming pool. Accept me now. Do not resist any longer because you cannot succeed. Your soul is mine for eternity. I am one. Give up and come to me. We will never give up. Never. There is not a man or a spirit in this world or any other that will break my family. We've lived through too much in our lives already to give it all up to you. We've lived through sorrow and separation and death and destruction. And we're still together because we love each other. And love is what holds us together. So, if you intend to stay, we will fight you to the end. And let me tell you, we will fight. And with God's help, you will never have us. And you will never have this baby. Never. You have come to the wrong house. <laughs> when he gets here. You're going to choose. That's it. You're choosing one of us, aren't you, Jessica? You're going to choose. Chester. Oh, choose me, Jess. Please, please, please. Chester, pull yourself together. Hi. Hi. Mr. Donahue? Mr. Tate, how are you? Fine, and you? Fine. You? Fine. And you? Boys, boys, I... I know this has been a very difficult thing for both of you, and I am sorry. But I just haven't known what to do. Well, frankly, if Mr. Donahue here would just bow out gracefully, all your troubles would be over. I'm sorry, Mr. Tate. I couldn't possibly do that. I realize you don't want to, and I fully understand, old boy. But you see, Jessica and I have many years together. We have an entire history. I know that, Mr. Tate. I know that. But you see, Jessica and I have a relationship of uncharted territory. We have nothing but newness together. You're short. You're overweight. You have no money. Money's all you have. All you have is nothing. And you have less. Which is more than you. <laughs> boys, boys, boys. Now stop it, Chester. Shame on you. Well, Mr. Donahue, seems we've reached an impasse. Uh, I'm afraid, Mr. Tate, you're right. A draw, Mr. Donahue. A stalemate, Mr. Tate. You're a wimp. You're a womanizer. Shrimp. Fight your ball. Oh, please, boys, stop it this second. If this were a hundred years ago, one of us would strike the other with his glove and we would fight a duel. I know, but we're not wearing gloves. I say we duel. All right, I'm game. Do you fence? No. Too bad. I was Florida State champion. <laughs> I say we duel with pistols. Can you shoot? No. Too bad I won medals. Swords. Pistols. Peanut fatso. Back body hawk belly. <laughs> Stop it immediately. Stop it. Now, there will be no more of this. There will be no fighting, no duels, nothing. You both seem to forget something very important. I mean, you may fight, you may maim each other, you may kill one another. But I make the decision. Oh, yeah. I forgot. <laughs> well, I don't think it's fair. I mean, he lives here. He can be scoring points with you every day. I want equal time. What do you suggest? You move in? Or you move out. You can stay in my place. I have a studio couch in the living room. No, that won't be necessary, boys. Please, sit down on the couch, please. <laughs> now, I want you to know that 
I really never meant to hurt either of you. I, I love you both. But it seems that in order to be with the man I love, I have to hurt the other man I love. And so I just don't know what else to do. Does this mean you've made a decision? Yes. I have. I don't know. Maybe I never saw a spaceship. I mean, I've been here, what? Six, eight hours now. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Except, I mean, why come back again to the same spot? I mean, why land here again in empty field, Connecticut? I mean, they could land in Paris, see a few girls. <laughs> I probably never saw it. It was probably just my imagination. It's, oh, God. Oh, what if I'm getting crazy again? I'm talking to myself here. That's a sign. <laughs> well, all right, come on. Come on. I'm not crazy. I mean, if I was crazy, I wouldn't think I was crazy. So I'm not crazy. <sighs> I might not be crazy, but waiting around here for a spaceship is definitely not sane. Oh, God, what's the matter with me? What's the matter with me? What's the matter with this whole family? I mean, all right, I mean, I'm here waiting for visitors from Mars. They're all home performing an exorcism on my nephew because he's possessed. He's a, it's a nice group. My brother-in-law, he, he murders my son, loses his memory, disappears, is reported dead. He comes back to life. Billy's with the son, he's... Eunice loves a killer. <laughs> Danny's wife gets kidnapped and killed, and now he's out looking for the killers, and Jody, poor Jody, gets jilted, ends up, he moves him with a girl. She's gay. <laughs> and Mary, I almost lose Mary for good, and if I lose my mind, I'm definitely gonna lose <sighs> What a life. What else could possibly happen here? Now that the devil is gone, what's going to happen to Tim and Corinne's marriage? Now that Jody and Alice are dating, what's going to happen to their relationship? Will Dutch ever get out of prison? Will Eunice wait for him? What's going to happen to Billy? Will the Sunnies take over his mind? Who will Jessica choose, Chester or Detective Donahue? What's going to happen to Danny? What happened to Bert? These questions and many others will be answered on the next episode of So. Soap is videotaped before a studio audience.